my little daughter is called Erin Mary and she attends Oakwood Primary School. She's a very, very active and interesting little girl. She loves interacting with both adults and children alike. She's got something that I never had when I was a kid, which is a love of school. Ibrahima is a lovely boy, a bit shy, and he loves his food and he loves his football. He likes to listen when I'm reading though, he's a good listener. He feels a bit sad on Thursday and Friday not to come to Nursery because he enjoys it all the time. Every minute if I'm saying, Ibrahim, are you ready for Nursery? He's the first person who is ready to go. From September 2008, the Early Years Foundation stage changes. New principles are to guide the work of all practitioners. One is positive relationships, children learning from a base of secure relationships with parents and practitioners. Learning is a social and an emotional process. And so we now see the child absolutely clearly as located in a community and professionals who work with children therefore have to have this sense of that wider community that are around the child, nurturing the child throughout the child's daily life over the weeks, over the months. Hiya. Morning, Ibrahim. Good morning. Oh, Ibrahim. Beautiful. Did you do this at home? Fantastic. Shall we wait till you get your coat off and pop it on our home board? I feel that within this unit, the positive relationships are encouraged because we look at the holistic child, not just a part. And we nurture that wholeness through good role modelling, encouraging friendships, enabling children to understand each other's feelings, helping them to appreciate adults' feelings also, and hopefully taking those gifts that we give them out into the community. Well done, Ibrahima. At four, Ibrahima's only in his second term in the foundation stage unit at Oakwood Primary in Leeds. He has a half-time nursery place. Erin's five, and in her second term of reception, full-time. It's a tremendous feeling that you're much more involved as a parent because they actually bring you into it. You're not stood there as sort of just an ornament. The teachers are very approachable. This morning I was a bit busy because I went last night for a night shift. I said, you know, that would be so lovely to see Brian on the assembly. That's why I came in. When we look at our statistics throughout the school, very few of the children who start actually end year six with us. We take 52 children into nursery, and I would say there are 52 different experiences between zero to four for these children. The current provision in the community is such that there's very little for families and very little for the zero to four age range. We have an incredibly long waiting list for our nursery. We are hoping for a new children's centre opening uh, adjacent to the school site very, very soon to, to help service that. But even with that, there is very little resource in the area to support these children. So they need support socially, they need support emotionally, they need support with language, across the board, really, whatever their cultural background. You were dancing yesterday, weren't you? She's on her... And when your mum came to pick you up, she said that she would have liked to have helped with the dancing, didn't you? Yeah. Developing a positive and meaningful relationship with parents sounds uh, straightforward and easy, but it's actually much more complex than that. Relationships are so positive that the mums feel secure enough to get up and dance. As 
suppose that what we're talking about is teachers seeing their community as a resource and a fantastically rich resource and that means opening the school doors to that community and really encouraging that community to come in and to be reflected in what goes on in that setting in a very active way. EYFS now promotes much closer links with parents and schools as partners. The recommendation is that children are allocated a key person who will have a relationship with parents and responsibility to provide children with the reassurance they may need day to day to feel safe and cared for. Can you see the badge? This man's badge. You can draw it on there. And then we can put it out together and put it on there. I can't draw policy on my badge. Yeah. I think that bit goes a little bit different. I think it's straighter at the top. Although we have pastoral workers, we're also very conscious of the fact that some children make relationships and bonds with other members of staff in the unit, and we feel that's very important to foster. Yabrima, who is in the OWLS group, made a really close bond with Mrs Packer, who is in a different group. But that's something that we really cherish and foster. That's how it goes is that how it goes like that? Good job, now you've got to cut that bit off there. Look, like, you just put your scissors where they want to cut you. don't want to cut your badge in half, do you? Oh. Is that OK now? The whole idea of a key worker for every child and family is something that is quite challenging in the nature of the way we staff our schools. So I think schools do need to think quite carefully about um, do they keep changing the key worker? Is it important to have a key worker that is with a child or, or assigned to a child and family for over longer periods of time? And then all of a sudden he said, oh, I'd like to, I'd like a please. At the end of the session, Angela feeds back to Ibrahima's key person. Elaine's building up a picture of Ibrahima, and at the moment he needs close relationships with many of the practitioners to support his learning. With very little experience away from mum, Ibrahima still finds complete independence challenging. He needs the support of a positive relationship with practitioners. With her extra experience, Erin has built up warm, trusting relationships with most of the adults and many of the children in the unit. These positive relationships are built on respect. knowledgeable adults are the best support for learning. These adults can interact with children, ask very open-ended questions and be able to go with the children's interests and really listen to what the children are saying. What can we do then? Right. Is it hard? It's another go. Oh, isn't it? Erin, can you see where you've made a little mark already? Shall we try it again at the same place? Oh, you've done it! Well done! The relationship that I'm looking for between a learner and a facilitator is one of mutual admiration and respect and value and affection. And that doesn't just happen, it, it's, it develops through experiences together, through having fun together, doing serious work together. You're never going to be successful as an educator of a child if the child doesn't feel safe with you, the child feels that you don't value them, that they can't have this sense of joy being with you. I like to see adults and children engaged together as companions on a learning journey. 
that's when you get good learning going on. Let me to hold the straw and then you can cut, OK? Have you decided how long you want your mouth to be? That's it. Is it this one or this one? This one. OK. Well done. The nature of that relationship between teacher and learner has shifted quite fundamentally through this curriculum. Yellow skin. Yellow skin! Should we put it on there? The move away from seeing your work in an isolating way has got to change fundamentally. We are moving towards developing more integrated, joined-up services. And that means that the professionals who are working in communities with children and families are part of the broader team, in a way. Did you do it on your own? Or did you do it together? Ah, oh, together. It adds in additional expertise that you might not have. It also adds in security, because you don't feel that you're struggling alone with this, but you've got a team of professionals and specialist knowledge that you can draw on in a much more ready way that'll make everybody's job easier. Where's your mummy? You to hold my hand. He talk about nursery. He talk about painting, drawing and reading, you know, because he likes painting a lot. Every day he'll come home with paint all over. You know, he really loved it. Though. He made a lovely policeman's helmet. Is with it? a badge on the front, he wants to do it all by himself. Oh, look he at that. He had a wonderful time. Is it? You have a good day today, Brian. Have a good day. Yes. Erin will be going through this school for a number of years, and it will affect Erin and the children around and the local community. And it's very important that, as a parent, I understand and know everything that's going on that will affect the immediate future and the more distant future of my child. I know it's quite a long time ago, but we've been asking parents um, to, to have a look at the things that they wrote before their children started school. Do you remember you wrote down what you hoped for Erin? Yeah. I hope my little Erin continues to be eager and keen to learn and that she develops her kind and sharing nature and remains as loving to her friends and parents and auntie as she has been. Also, that she continues to have fun while still learning and finding out about new things. We all want Erin to just continue to be Erin and never lose the brightness that is her. My hope for the future is that every child can access a setting like this. I think we hope and we will always hope that children will be happy to learn and to feel safe and secure. Um, that's our hope now and it's our long-term hope as well. We wouldn't want that to change. Mm.